Good morning, everybody. It is, oh, what is the time? Nearly half past seven in the morning on Saturday, the 6th of January. And welcome to the first read along section of How to Be a Normal Person by TJ Clone. So I'm Mia Skaberis for those who um, may not have seen my face before. I'm sure there are a few of you who are quite happy that they haven't seen my face before, but that's okay. So um, I've got chapter one. And but before I started, I actually wanted to read the, the little short foreword that TJ wrote for this particular book because I think it's just perfect. And of all the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books that I've actually read, I think this is probably one of the most appropriate sort of little forewords. Yeah. And then I'll read from, from chapter one and explain why I chose that little bit of section. So it starts off, never, ever let anyone tell you that who you are is wrong. It's okay to be gay or straight or bisexual. It's also okay to be asexual, demisexual, pansexual, or aromantic. You do you, and if anyone gives you grief for that, remember one thing. You are exactly the way you are supposed to be. And I just love that. I think bearing that we read MM and gay romance and and all of its various incarnations and tropes, I think it's just absolutely perfect. And, you know, it doesn't really matter who you are or, you know, how you love or who you love. It's perfectly okay. Welcome to the Clunatics Podcast. I'm Kurt Graves. In this episode, we're going to delve into the read-alongs. For those who aren't members of the Clunatics Facebook group, read-alongs are a virtual book club in which members participate in live reads and guide readers through discussions about TJ's books. The audio you heard at the beginning of this episode was producer Mia's very first live read back in January 2018. So tell me the story of how they got started. So the read-alongs were my idea, and it's something I know I said before that the Trevor Project was one of the things I'm most proud of, but the read-alongs are probably my favourite thing I've ever done out of anything in my life because the read-alongs have quite literally brought me my found family. But the read-alongs came out of an idea of, of mine around, well, we are in a fan group for an author. Most fan groups would have a book club of some sort, and it was like, how do we create a book group that is going to work across international borders? And initially it was like when I was thinking it out, it was like, okay, we could read a chapter a day. How would we get people engaged in a really positive, visceral way and get people on board and actually having really good dialogue about these books and the characters and the themes and the, the language and the literature, etc. And so I sort of, I had a really good think about it. From memory, I, I believe I did a post in the group. We're, we're talking right back in December of 2017. So it's a little while ago. But I had a really good response of people going, oh, that sounds like a great idea. And then at that stage, I discovered Facebook live chat. I'm like, oh, we could get people to actually physically host partial readings of the chapter of their favorite piece of the chapter or a bit of the chapter that that they think is really important and then to discuss around that part of the chapter and at the time I knew it was probably something that was going to be quite confronting for some people the idea of being in front of a video and live I'm pretty lucky in that I've done a lot of public speaking and having to talk to a lot of executives etc in my job so I'm very used to Um, being in front of people so it never worried me my only worry was that we were going to end up not having people wanting to participate but I thought yeah what the hell we'll try and so I made the decision to just go with it and I made the executive decision as I have pretty much every month since to choose the book for the read-along and so I chose how to be a normal person because it is a book that just lends itself to being fun for a read-along and that's how it all started. And I remember the very, the very first episode that I did, I was shaking, my knees were shaking because I was so worried and really nervous and anxious that it wasn't going to work. But then people popped up on the feed and started talking to me. And at that stage, I only read, back then, we were only reading part of the chapter. Since then, it's evolved to the whole chapter, which 
which shows how people love it so much. Here's producer Angela explaining what the read-alongs meant to her when they first started. I could definitely talk for hours. I could give you a long verbal essay on what the read-alongs mean to me and have meant to me. But I think it, from a personal place, at the beginning of it, it was the first time in a long time where I took a risk and chose to do something just for me that wasn't, that didn't have anything to do with all of my other titles in my everyday life. I hadn't put myself forward that way and been vulnerable in that way with strangers in a long time. And it felt like a throwback to an earlier me, one that performed, one that didn't mind getting up in front of people, one that took more risks, I think. And damn, did that risk pay off because it gave me a family that I never expected. So that's the beginning of it, what it means to me. And and that's just the tip of the iceberg, but that's the short answer. From my conversations with the Clunatics, some have been participating in the read-alongs from the very beginning, while others, such as Danae, come to the read-alongs after having their curiosity peaked. We met Danae in episode nine. I was being nosy one day. Mia said something about a book came out and she was saying it was fun to kind of watch people. And I'm socially awkward and inept. So when I saw that I could actually see people and they wouldn't know that I was there, I kind of just scrolled on in. It was a book I hadn't read yet and it caught my attention. So I just kind of popped in. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. But yeah, it's a really easy way to kind of dip your toe in the water without having to jump in. (laughs) Exactly, because no one can see your face. I mean, when you're laughing, like no one has to know if it's a part that you really shouldn't laugh at that you're laughing at, because you're in the privacy of your own home, you know? Here's Mona, who we met in episode eight. When did you decide that you would participate? Uh, Just recently, actually. I've only ever done one, and it was last week was my first one. What was it, and how did it go? (laughs) So we read uh, The House in the Cerulean Sea. And I read chapter 17, which was towards the end of the book. That's a good one. It is. It's a fantastic chapter. I mean, the whole book is amazing. But I thought page 72 was like, eh. It went well. I was nervous because, I mean, there are 3,000 plus people in that Facebook group. And that's doing a live read is like standing up on stage in front of 3,000 plus people. That really messes with your head. But I had some some support. You know, I I reached out to a few, a few clunatics and everybody sort of guided me through the process. And, but I saw Mia had posted, we're going to read Cerulean. And I was like, you know what? I better just jump right in. Because I had seen them pop up in the past and I kept questioning, well, maybe I want to do it, but I don't know. It's really, really scary. And so I kept putting it off and not doing it. And so I had no excuse. I'm at home. I can't use work as an excuse. I can't say I'm doing anything else. So I figured I'd jump right in. So I signed up for a chapter and I was like, well, I'm tied to it now. I can't back out. I mean, of course you can back out. But so I, I signed up and I did my research and I sort of followed along with who was going on what day. And I was watching everybody um, do their live reads. But as soon as I signed up, I actually sent Susanna a message. And I was like, so I did this, signed up, help. I don't want to fuck this up. So she kind of guided me through the process and told me exactly like, all right, you're going to do this. You're going to live feed in here on this event and your day is going to be this day. So she walked me through the process and basically just reassured me I wasn't going to screw it up, which was fantastic. But yeah, it was it was fun and really amazing to watch everybody be so encouraging because you're you're reading and there are people watching you. And they're sending you messages telling you how great you are and just basically communicating with you while you're reading. And it's it can also be distracting. So I kept trying not to look at the comments because I would pause and be like, oh, wait, yeah, I want to answer this question. But then you get away from the story. But I really had a great time doing it. 
So this is my first ever live read in the group. I've never done it before, so hopefully I'm not gonna screw it up. But no. assuming everybody can hear me okay, and we'll just get started, right? Okay, so I'm reading from the actual word cover. Hopefully I don't get distracted by all of the, all the comments, because that's really easy to, to do, I guess. <laughs> Hi Shannon. Hi David. All right. So I will get started. It's not an incredibly long chapter and it is, it's definitely the chapter where Linus says goodbye and it's super emotional and heartwarming and adorable. So I guess here we go. Okay. Uh, so can you walk us through the process, how it works? Sure. So it's a lot easier now because the series sort of lends themselves or book releases lend themselves to which books should come next. Generally, it's been a dictatorship, I'll be honest. <laughs> but I did, I have gone out a few times and said, would people prefer to do this book or that book? So I did, like I did a poll when Heart Song came out and people chose to actually go on to Bear Otter and the Kid over Heart Song because they wanted time to digest Heart Song. So what happens then is I will actually go through the book and work out how many chapters there are, whether there's a prologue and an epilogue. I'll work out in a calendar the approximate dates that we need to actually have the read-along to occur. Then I'll go to Sita and I'll say, Sita, my love, can you please create part one and part two graphics for this read-along? And then Sita goes off and does her magic because I've never learned how to use Photoshop and I refuse to because it's not a skill I need. And she has fun with that. Then she'll send them back to me. I will actually create two events, so part one and part two, because TJ has long books, so you need more than a week or two weeks or even four weeks sometimes to actually do the read-alongs. And we'll post it. I will put a sign-up for people to sign up the chapters, depending on the book. So some books I will have a chapter sign-up, so people just go in and they allocate themselves to a chapter. Other books that have proven where I've known they're going to be incredibly popular and they don't have as many chapters or availability, I will just say, if you're interested, put your name down and then I will do a live draw. So some instances I've done live draws and just allocated chapters out, however they've, they've ended up. So that's pretty much the process. And then I always do the, the, the prologue or chapter, the first chapter, and then you the Pretty much every book of TJ's has an epilogue, so I'll usually close it down as well. The only instance where I haven't done that was with the second last book we just did, which was Who We Are, because I was very ill. And so Sue Eaton actually picked that up for me and ran that, which was very lovely of her. So, yeah, and that's how it works. So, you you know, person's allocated their chapter, they they – post when they're going to do their live read, they do their reading and then they finish up their reading and obviously they post it so it's in the, in the event and then they go in and they will create a discussion thread post as well. So the idea of the discussion thread post is where you really get the book club piece where people can come in and um, talk about the chapter, talk about whatever it is that the, the person has actually posed in terms of a question and, and it could be something as silly as, oh, I'm trying to think here, it could be something as silly as, if you were a colour, what colour would you be? Through to really serious questions around, you know, found family or in some instances, there have been some pretty serious questions posed. Some some have been around abuse, some have been around, you know, family problems. It's been it's been quite amazing how it's all worked and, and the outcomes and inputs. So inputs and outcomes, incomes. Yeah. You know what I mean. It must be challenging with people all over the world to get the timing right to make sure the chapters go in order. Yeah. So one of the things that I've – like new new readers often get quite confused by that, but we've always said that it's the date in your time zone, right? Because obviously I live in Australia. We have people who contribute from the U.S., Canada – We've had people, you know, Britta, she reads from Germany. We've got people in the UK. At one stage, we had somebody who was in the United Arab Emirates. So, yeah, you know, so all around the world. So it's always been in your time zone. 
And the only thing you needed to do was to make sure that the previous chapter had been read already. So because we I pin the post where the sign-ups are so people know who's coming next, they can go to that person directly and say, hey, what time are you going to do your reading? One of the things we do ask of those people who are doing the reading is to actually jump in in the event and put a time that they're going to be doing their reading so people know to jump in when they can. Although it used to be that you got notifications where people were going on, but Facebook has decided to change its rules post uh, what happened in Christchurch, so we don't get notifications for live reads anymore, which is a bit of a shame. So, But it is what it is. Yeah. Well, I have to say you have not sold me on wanting to do this. You have to coordinate <laughs> it with other people. You have to do it live. No. And also they might ask you some really deeply personal questions. <laughs> Well, it's really interesting because what I have found is that depending on the chapter that people are reading, people are quite willing to give information. But there have been some incredibly funny moments, like you, <laughs> when people, when we had, when we had the random draw, it's almost guaranteed that one of three people will get the sex scene, and that will either be Angela, Elaine, or Lisa Magliano. And Elaine doesn't swear. So she has very creative, non-sweary words, which always makes me laugh because you can see her trying very hard to um, not cringe every time you know that she has to say a swear word. Lisa doesn't really like – actually, Sita is another one. Sita with the sex scene is the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life because she just skips over them and just giggles for, like, <laughs> 10 minutes, which is hilarious. But then – on the uh, which makes me laugh because I think it's hilarious and and it's just it's one of those things that watching people get really uncomfortable around some of these things makes me laugh because I'm mean and nasty and <laughs> horrible person underneath it all. But then we have instances where where certain things have happened and people are doing their read along and the emotion is so incredibly real. Like, you know, when certain characters have passed away, whatever way that that's happened, or when, when, when there have been really tough scenes to read, you know, not, as, as we know, not TJ's books are not all flight and sunshine and happiness. Some of TJ's scenes are really tough to read. And oh, really? they're there for that person. Oh, yeah, you oh. know. But <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> but do that. Imagine doing that with a group of people there supporting you through that moment. Who are you can see what people are writing. So people are sending you, you know, the thumbs up or the the heart emoji, you know, all the emojis that float up when you're on a live, a live read. But then there are conversations going on where people are typing things to each other during your reading. So you can see, you can get reactions or you get people going, keep going, you're doing really well. This is, I know this is really hard or I'm crying too or I'm laughing so hard I can barely hear you because this is hilarious. It's, it's a really, it's, it's an intimate shared moment but it's done with people who get it and that's part of the joy of the read-alongs. It's you are, you're not alone. You might be in your lounge by yourself or your bedroom or I've been in the park surrounded by people looking at me like I'm a weirdo but the thing is is, you are not alone on that read. You have people there for you and people who are participating with you and who are there for you, and that's a really lovely thing. But the really cool thing was we had narrators come on board to do it. Like Derek was the, ver was the first narrator, and that was I was so excited, so excited, and he was so incredibly nervous, and it was awesome. But to see him like live sitting sitting in my lounge room watching – somebody who I admired from his narrative style actually work through and try to remember how he did this voice and just having fun with it was really exciting. And one of the things that we've discovered over a period of time is we have some incredible potential narrators in the group. Like John Steiger, he like he has a voice that learn, just loans itself, lends itself, sorry, language, <laughs> to, to actually – thinking about becoming a narrator himself and there have been others that have come on board had a go and then gone oh maybe this isn't actually for me I'm just going to watch from here on and so there's been you know one end to the other but it's been enthusiastically embraced and I've really loved it Michael Leslie practically volunteers himself when we've done 
books that he's narrated. And they obviously, people get very excited when Michael's on because he he's on for a long time. It takes him probably <laughs> three times as long to read his chapter because he goes off on tangents, which is a lot of fun for people to, to, to watch and observe. Here's Danae talking about her first read-along. Uh, so you've participated in it? Yeah, I bit the bullet and I did it for the lightning struck heart. Okay, when was that? Oh man, I want to say maybe almost two two years ago, a year and a half ago. Okay. That's and what was that like? Like, what did you have to do and how did it feel? Um, I was terrified because, like I said, socially awkward. And then the tables turned because instead of like being able to see everybody, they can now see me. And I move, like I talk with my hands. I'm very like active and I make these facial expressions that my mom says are epic, but they're not, they're horrifying. So I get into it and my eyebrows are not eyebrows of judgment. Their eyebrows are crazy and they just move. (laughs) So like I had to kind of rehearse in front of the mirror a few times and then watching all these other people, I realized, you know, they don't really care what I look like. They don't care how I sound. They just want me to have a place to express myself and love TJ. So my husband, who made fun of me because I got ready, like I was like, I'm going to do my makeup. He's like, and you're totally good. He's like, so just be you and read. So I did. It was perfect. And the support you get from everybody, you know, everybody tries to get on. It might not all be at the same time, but they'll get on and you'll get these comments about how, oh, I loved how you did that voice or people's interpretation of their characters from TJ and watching them. And it's nice because you get to read a chapter a day. It's not like you get sucked into it. It's like you can slowly actually enjoy every aspect of the book through these read-alongs. Or maybe it affords me modesty. I moved back around the desk. Ryan looked between the two of us, eyes narrowed. You think so? She asked. How positively illuminating. In my experience, most wizards don't even know the meaning of modesty. I'm not most wizards. Oh, wow. I have missed you, Mama said, clapping her hands together. It's been far too long, precious. I don't like it when you're gone from me for long. Tell me, are the rumors true? I almost didn't want to ask, but Mama expected me to. And then it became something else entirely. Well, it went it, it went deeper and it opened up wider. So they became really popular. Or maybe that's just my perception. But there was certainly a point where we were having to regulate how many people or how much how many chapters people got and then it came to a point where me me and I said okay we have to be fair about this so now it's if you're interested here's a sign up comment I'll put your name in a hat I'll draw your name out you get this chapter so that so and actually before that we were pretty good about if if we had you know deep feelings about a chapter being able to say we, we had developed bonds enough at that point to contact one another. And I think we were still very polite with one another. And I think we still are, but, you know, very open hearted. And, you know, oh, this really means a lot to me. Is there a chance I could read it instead? And, oh, yeah, that works for me. Let's swap. We did a lot of that. But her assigning it, she would assign it. Then that's where it went from there. And we would swap as necessary for, you know, work schedules or specific chapters that we wanted. And our real lives started to creep into those videos. It's, it's, they started out as 15, 20 minute videos where we laughed together and shared something that we cared about or that interested us or that opened our perception. And then we started to get to know each other, really get to know each other. Mia would turn the camera around and we could see her pets. Family members would walk in and out. Someone would come on camera and say, oh my gosh, I just had a really long day at work. I'm sorry it took me so long and I'm half an hour later than I told you guys I would be. And so we started to get to get to know one another. And at this point, I I wasn't Facebook friend. I wasn't quote unquote Facebook friends with these guys. I was I was still feeling all of this out. And I know I wasn't the only one. And once one clunatic friended me, they all followed suit. And even then, then it was like, oh boy, now they're gonna see all the posts about my children, and they're gonna see all of my super crazy liberal posts, and they're gonna see, you know, all of that. And that's still, that was that was online friendship, good online friendship. And then the chats happened. I think part of the reason the chats happened was because we were, we started to become so invested in one another that we didn't want to miss the other person reading. Even though we reminded each other all the time, 
you know, that's why we record them. So they're there and then you can go to it later when you have time. There's some, there was something about sp spending time with one another, commenting together, emoting together, interacting with one. It was our time with our friends and it stopped being, oh, I'm so nervous to read in front of these people. And it was like, oh my God, I get to spend time with my friends. Has doing that read along changed the way you think about TJ's books at all? Yes. We already talked about his books being fantastic. Having individual readers bring their own personalities and their own perspectives to the characters really gives you a much deeper view of the work, of the book, of the characters. So you get a this fascinating experience from all these different individuals. We asked a number of regular participants to also answer that question. Here's Amy, Sue, and Shannon sharing their thoughts. I really love how the read-alongs have helped me engage with TJ's books more than other books that I've read. I've never been big on analysis or what does this really mean? What's the deeper thoughts to this? That's never been my strong suit. But being able to do the read-alongs and while someone is reading passages or discussing passages that they enjoy and then hearing my my friends, my fellow clunatics talking about how things have infected them or how this relates to that or the analysis involved, the deeper meanings, the looking at things from different angles, getting different people's life experiences and how they interpret what the books or the passages are about. That's just, it's helped me engage on a deeper level with some of the books and really make them more real to me. And they've made them just more important to me. They've, they've, it's built up the importance of these books for me, not only because of the community, but because of the stories that they tell. For me, you read the TG book, you love it, you enjoy it, it, amazing characters, and it really speaks to you. But the read-alongs give you such an added dimension, not only the joy of listening to somebody else read, which is just amazing, but for me, the added bonus that you don't get anywhere else is the comments as people listen to the read-along and then they unpick the motivations, how they interpret the scene, the characters, the things that you possibly didn't notice or realise when you read it yourself because, you know, everybody reads it in their own way and having other people's perspectives on it is so interesting and gives so much more richness to the whole book that you, when you read again, I think about what people have said in the comments and I in the read-alongs, and I'm like, oh, I hadn't ever thought of that. That was just like, gives it so much more interest to me. And also how our emotions, obviously they come out when we read, but when the read-alongs happen, the emotions are brighter and I don't know, you feel it a bit more, I think. And so all of that interaction that we have as, you know, not only as when we're reading, but actually when we're just listening and the interaction is just amazing and makes the whole thing for me just such a pleasure and joy. Okay, and what ways have the read-alongs changed the way I think about TJ's books? I think they give us a little bit more insight into TJ and the way that he writes because we've started to notice more themes throughout his stories and throughout books as they go forward, whether it be verbiage that he uses that we see frequently or colors that he uses in books, the way that he describes things. Sometimes it can be maybe a mindset that he was in while he was writing it or what emotion that he's trying to provoke in us. But the read-alongs really give us a chance to break down books chapter by chapter and what they mean for the larger community and what they mean for to us. Like, I think the last one I did with Angela, which was The Long and Winding Road, and it was the last chapter before the epilogue. And it brought a lot of feelings for both of us, and I really enjoyed our breakdown and getting to discuss it with another person. I was be able to see the comments as they were coming in and bring questions to Ange uh, so that we could that we could talk about the feelings that was 
you know, the story was bringing up, but it was also the end of a series. And we had, we saw such growth through all of the characters that it really gave us um, this ability to break down and see all these people for who they are and look at their journeys and appreciate them on a deeper level. So I think when you're reading a book, you just fly through the book. I mean, you get invested in what's happening and you just want to know what happens and you get to the end. And I think for the read-alongs, majorly we've already read the book and then we're reading along together and it gives us a chance to slow down and fully process and appreciate each chapter for what it is and how it makes it a whole, I guess. <laughs> Where the fuck were we? Oh, oh, talking about Mrs. Paquin and race and going back to what you said about, like, you can see him working through things and you can see him changing things. And one of the things that we talked to, um, Shannon and I talked about privately, just a little side note, was talking about how the journey of bear embracing and accepting his sexuality and how you know we start out with a book that in a lot of ways is about discovering your own sexuality and is about being afraid being afraid of being of, of being who you are of being gay of being of being attracted to a same-sex partner and there's there's some bi erasure happening I, I i know that sounds harsh but i won't say there's bi erasure i'll say bear doesn't consider it a possibility it's not that it's not that our author doesn't consider the possibility. It's that Bear doesn't consider the possibility. Right, and you, I know you had a problem with this, but it's Bear's character, and this just shows the script. No, and it's good. And fellow podcast producer Susanna put it this way: One way that the read-alongs uh, have changed the way that I think about books, and particularly TJ's books, is they sort of show you how one character or paragraph or chapter or whole book is just interpreted in a different way by different people. And I suppose in in that sense, it's like a high school English class, except it's fun and I actually want to attend. And Britta, who often completes her reads in both English and German, had these thoughts. The read-alongs didn't really change my way of thinking about TJ's books. It's more of a of a brighten of my understanding or brighten of my horizon through the input of the others sometimes there's someone finding words to the thoughts I have but don't know how to articulate sometimes or there are times when others see things I didn't notice at all and sometimes you get to see the perspective of someone else, how they see a scene of, of that book and how they think different about it or how, where they are coming from when they think or feel different to myself. And that's what, that's not really, I know, that's not really changing the way of, of thinking that it's, it gives it all a bigger dimension. The read-alongs have definitely changed how I can interpret these books. It's it's the way that people use inflection when they when they speak sometimes, or even the, and the discussion thread afterwards. Like the discussion thread alone is is awesome, just because it's it's good to hear everyone else's opinion on how they interpreted it. We're going to celebrate a few of the Clunatic's favorite moments from the read-alongs. We're going to hear a lot of different voices and clips from previous read-alongs over the next few minutes, so if you don't recognize a voice, please check the episode transcript at clunaticspodcast.com. It's really hard to choose one favorite read-along because they're so excellent, all of them, but a couple of them jumped out at me, and one of the ones was... The Bones Beneath My Skin, Chapter 13, Susan had Johnny come in and read part of it. And then at the end, she came back in and she played the song Hold My Hand. And it it just felt like a really emotionally important moment. Shannon has said in the past that her husband, Jason, calls us her cluster, like her sensate cluster. And in that moment... There were so many of us watching it live and I just, I had that moment. It felt like at the end of season one, 
insensate where they're all on the boat and the music is playing. And that's what it felt like. It felt like I was in my room, but also I was across the world with the people closest to me. And we're all listening to the same song and singing along with the same song together. And that, that moment, I think for me is really representative of what the read alongs are. It's, it's that shared experience. I have two favorite read alongs. The first would have to be love song because it was just such a fun time. Love song was a free short story that came right after Raven song and it was a gift from TJ to all of us, which revealed a lot of background for different characters and things that we didn't know that kind of helped us bridge some information. And we, when we did it, we were kind of assigned parts and tried to make it interactive. And there were some hiccups and it was just such a great bonding experience to share that story but also share it with people who you could just have fun screwing up and being ridiculous and just having a lot of fun. My personal favorite read along to do was how to be a movie star. I think because I just laughed the whole time in the chapter that I did. I can't remember what the chapter number was, but it was where Gus was helping Josie (laughs) using the wiki how and yeah. I just couldn't stop laughing and it was so much fun and I just really enjoyed that one. This guide will provide easy steps to make sure that you and your crush are on your way to living a happily ever after like you deserve. But as always, keep in mind that if you're mistaken and or a stalker, it's not right to pursue the object of your desires if feelings are not returned. If you're mistaken, apologize and back off. We'll discuss that more in part one. If you're a stalker, please click on how to turn yourself into the local police or how to survive in federal prison. Whoa, Josie breathed. Click on that one. On the last one. No, Gustavo said. We can't. It's a trap. Trust me. I've been there before. I learned things about cats I never wanted to know. We have to resist. It was probably for the best. My favorite read that I actually did was Raven Song Chapter 9, which I did on the 11th of August, 2018. And oh, it was amazing. It was such a moving chapter. It was so full of emotion and I cried through the whole thing. Absolutely, tears streaming down my face, crying and crying and crying whilst I kept reading. And I rubbed the tears away, but actually I just thought, right, let's let all this emotion flow out of you. Don't try stopping. And I didn't feel embarrassed or anything because it was, you know, all my friends watching, so it never makes me feel embarrassed. And I was just like, just go with it. So I did. (laughs) The moment he was there and laughing and yelling at me to get my ass in gear. And the next he was on his knees, his hands clutched to his chest. I said, no, Marty died. One moment he was there and laughing and yelling at me to get my ass in gear. And the next he was on his knees, his hands clutched to his chest. I said, no, please, no. He looked at me with wide eyes and he was gone before I even heard the sirens of the ambulance. That night, I called my pack needing to hear their voices, and I got an answering machine. I didn't leave a message. The other thing about the Raven Song read-along was I hadn't read the book. It was a really quick turnaround. Mia said, oh, can we do this? The book's just coming straight out. Can we do the read-along straight away? And we all said, yes, we would do it. And so I hadn't read the book, which was unusual. And basically, I did the chapter a day because I was so nervous about that book because of the angst from Wolf Song and that I'm not a very angsty person, which is obviously why I cried through the whole thing. And so to me, I I didn't read the book beforehand. I listened a chapter a day with the read along and, you know, I could have the rest of the time, I could read something else. I could come down from that, oh my God, what's going to happen next? Oh my God, this is making me cry and face the next chapter the next day. So I found it really, really useful for that. I think my favourite read-along ever was The Bones Beneath My Skin because I read it for the first time in time with the read-alongs. So it was like I was experiencing it with a whole group of people that I really love and they were reading it to me and I'd never read it before. You know, like when you read a book and you just want to say things to someone like, oh, my God, this just happened, but you're not reading at the same time. This was sort of like... We were reading it at the same time. So I could 
you know, be surprised at the same time as my friends and that sort of thing. It was, yeah, it was really exciting and different and I loved it. My favorite read along is the chapter that I gave away. I gave away or retreated a chapter in Why We Fight to, I gave it to Lewis and Angela. I took a little bit more of a serious chapter and they got the chapter with the egg. Lewis's laughter on that read along still stays with me every time I read or reread that book as he discovers the magical egg for the first time. I threw my hands up. It's your fault. You bought it for me. I did. Helena agreed. But I thought you were going to use it in private. What is happening? Paul yelled. Helena rolled her eyes. I bought Corey a sex toy that he shoved up his ass in public. You it's okay, Helena said. <laughs> I have Amazon Prime, so I got for shipping. That doesn't... Paul, sh Paul shouted at her. Yes, Paul. <laughs> yes. Paul was on my side, though he didn't know it. With our powers combined, we could take on the queen. It was the last <laughs> it was the last level, the final boss fight. We had this. Mine is when Jay was reading and there was a back behind him was a view of New York. And to me, I'd never been to New York at that time. And that just was so magical. And that just started it off in an amazing way. And then I had to go to work. It was quite early, I think. And I was in my car. I was listening to him. I was concentrating. And I think it must have been the bones beneath my skin because there was helicopters in the scene. It was quite dark and scary. I think it was that one. And then there was helicopters in the background of Jay's of Jay's. Backdrop. There was actual, he had his own sound effects going and um, it just made it so magical. That, that was probably one of my favourites. But then another favourite was Susanna's Shadow Box, which was so good. And I was with my partner, we were out and about and I was watching it on my phone. And unfortunately, I had to go somewhere. So I had, for me personally, like it was so spectacular, but also this was, a, I left my phone with my partner and I made him react to all the characters and all the fun that was happening. And he just quietly handed back my phone to me when I got back in the car and just shook his head as if to say, well, I have no idea what I was doing. But anyway, that was that one. And I mean, then I like all the ones with animals and I like you know, I like to hear each other, everyone's voices and oh, there's never a bad one, is there? One minute I was fighting the urge to run for the city gates that I could see on the horizon and the next I felt a wave of peace wash over me. I took a stuttering step, stopped, took a breath, let it out slowly. The crowd parted before us and there he stood. Shit, got to find him. No, that's not you. Ah, <sighs> Morgan. My favorite read along is the 24 hour extravaganza that was blessed for me. So, what happened is that instead of, you know, having a 24 hour span for each person in the read along to read a chapter or part of a chapter, what we actually did was we split the story into parts and over a 24 hour period, everybody who was reading read within a certain time slot. And so, first of all, there was a much quicker pace in the read-alongs, which isn't always necessary, but was nice this time because Blasphemy is a short story, and this helped keep the momentum going. But also, it, it was just a lot of fun because Blasphemy is a fun story. And, you know, from the get-go, Mia dressed up a little bit to start the story off, and from then, from there, everybody just sort of spontaneously jumped on this wagon and said, oh, hey, I'm going to dress up a little bit. So we had people putting on sort of costumes or even just like a hit band of horns or we're doing full makeup. And it was just so much fun. What is my favorite read-along to date and why? That's such a hard question. I've been able to do 
a lot with the read-alongs. I love that it's helping stretch our creativity. I mean, obviously, I want to say How to Be a Normal Person is going to be my favorite just because it's my favorite book. But when Lyndall busted out the Yasser Arahat, I was like, oh, I, I have a later chapter. Maybe I could make a Grumpy Gus. And then I made a Grumpy Gus. And it's inspired me to make a whole bunch of TJ's plushies. So that was a wonderful benefit um, of being able to be creative. I liked being able to dress up as Satan and have Ange jump on and be my Jimmy while we were reading Blasphemy. Her showing up in that collar and those bracelets, I like, I just about died. I absolutely just died. Demons, are you ready? Too fucking bad we're starting. It was a Tuesday when Satan realized he didn't want to get up for work. Granted, in hell it always felt like Tuesdays. It was part of the torture. Everyone agreed on that Tuesdays were the absolute worst and therefore Satan had made the decree 6,000 years ago that it would always feel like a Tuesday. It had gone over well with the demons. So just what makes these read-alongs so special? It's obvious everyone enjoys participating in them, but what else have these virtual readings brought? I guess the interaction with people, even if they can't see you, it's just nice to be able to connect with somebody else and to see how they react to a TJ book. You know, I get my own personal feels in different chapters, and it's nice to be able to watch somebody else and see that. (laughs) I'm not crazy. This didn't just hit me that way. It hit somebody else the same way, too. It's just, it makes you feel more connected. And you've, you've sort of leveled up within the Clunatics. I feel like it's like the next level. Kind of, yeah. It just, it it makes, I think it's more like a own personal level than dealing with the fanatics. Like now I get to know who these people are and I have these extra friends on Facebook, but it's kind of like, it's helped my own self-esteem. You know, now I'm more comfortable being able to talk with people than I would have been before because these people, it's a judgment-free zone, you know, and there's no, you know, well, you talk funny or your hair looks ridiculous today. You know, it's just like an understanding of, I love for books. Is that only true in the group or is that true in real life too? Like, has it made you be more uh, brave? I guess a bit in real life, not as much because I'm still just awkward when I open my mouth. Things spill out that just shouldn't. So I try to keep that from like an internet perspective way easier. I can now like talk to different, I've joined multiple groups because of the clunatics, like something I would have never done before. And do you feel like you kind of like leveled up in the clunatics? Like you're a part of like an even more exclusive group now? Fuck yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. In what way? I know it's new, but like, what well, perks? Did you get a swag bag? Wait, there's swag bags? I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't done it. Or something. I haven't done it. I'm wondering what the perks are. Is there a newsletter? Do you get a toaster? Oh, oh my God, a Clunatic toaster? I, maybe, yes, I don't please know. please sign me up. Um, it, it's, so now, you know, being part of the Clunatic family, right? Everybody's welcome. Everybody's involved. But being vulnerable and putting yourself out there on that live read kind of ups your level a little bit because now you can connect with all those other people that have done it as well. It's scary because you put yourself out there and it is live. So if you screw up, you're screwing up live. I feel and it's like there forever. I would hope that that's expected. Like, yeah. I'm sure no one has done a perfect read. Because nobody does a perfect read for right. a whole chapter for yeah. an hour or however long you're on there. That'd be yeah. insane. We don't do perfect reads. We stop a lot, mm-hmm. which is why I wouldn't want people to see me <laughs> doing it live. Because <laughs> it's like, no, but that's, it's not nearly I as think, impressive as the finished product. No, but I think that's the best part. It shows the, that a human being is reading it at that moment. The read-alongs give me life. I catch up with them. I try to watch as many live as I can. I catch up with them, but the supporting encouragement that people give you while you're doing it and the energy that it gives you and the opportunity to kind of have it like a book group, it's just wonderful. What makes the read-along so special to me is the interaction with fellow clinics and some of my found family and the time that we know that at this one moment, we're all interacting together about a topic that there's not a lot of other people that we can talk to about. I think a lot of us, you know, we don't know in our actual physical lives, know other people who are fans of TJ's books. And to have this moment where we can all get together, experience each other, learn more about each other's personalities, cheer each other on, and 
make comments and jokes and just generally interact with the people that we love. What makes the read along special to me? I'm going to have to say, I know I kind of am repeating myself, but I think the community is what makes the read along special to me. It, it lets us put faces to names of the people that we don't actually see and talk to very often in the group. So you get to hear their voice and see them read something that's important to them or funny to them. You get to see their facial expressions while it's happening. So the thing that makes the read alongs special is really the readers. It's the group as a whole that a bunch of us get together and watch each other read chapters of a book that we have probably read or listened to m many, many, many times. But it's, 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 you know, that we're all still, we all still keep doing it. It's that I know everyone's pet's name because of these read-alongs. I mean, that's, it's just a sense of camaraderie that, that I really enjoy. I always love when someone's coming in and doing it for the first time because and I remember my first time, my first live read, I was so nervous and I thought this is just going to be so bad and I'm going to forget how to read or something like that. Is It's just going to be a disaster. And so I love seeing people come in and their first time they're so nervous, but once they've finished it, they just feel so good about it and, and we all love experiencing that with you and holding your hand and... It's, it's just fun seeing people grow and get more confident and share more of themselves. I was a viewer much before I started participating. And the very first chapter I ever clicked on, Britta was reading, and she was reading in German. And it took a while for me to get adjusted to her reading in a language that I do not know. When I had a mess, I had a very ernsthaft Versuch, um dich to massacre, said I. Dann werde ich dir niemals ein Messer als Trinkgeld geben, sagte er. Wie bedauerlich. Nimm das Geld, Helena. Ich will dein verdammtes Geld nicht. Du hast noch nie ein Problem damit gehabt. Jetzt aber schon. But then when I got thought about it, I thought, how awesome is that? That someone on the Germany is reading to me in German and sharing a love for a book that we both had. I think the reason the why the read-alongs are important, it's a way to connect with people from different backgrounds and different countries and get to see names and faces and they get to little, a little bit know about each other, about pets and about children and about other people who might pop up during a read-along. It's just a really good way to connect. Yes, we're still on the clinic page, but also there's so much happening, quote-unquote, behind the scenes in our own individual friend groups, where that's where I got to know everybody. They aggressively friended me, aggressively friended me. And they, they, they really, in a way, in a way, the way that TJ does it through his books, they demonstrated for me, this is what Fong family is. This is what love is. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to tell you things about myself. I'm going to be vulnerable with you. I'm going to be real with you. And it's not always deep stuff. Sometimes it's just funny stuff. Sometimes it's history stuff. Sometimes, but just real life. It's real life. And then, and then there was this. At some point, I realized like, this is what found family. This is it. This is what it is. It stopped being about what was being read, and it became about, about the readers. It became about them. In in a mortifying moment at our clinic get together, Susanna felt the need to point out in front of T.J. Clune, our author. Thank you, Susanna. That I forgot momentarily as we were getting on our flight what we were actually going to do because i was talking to her and i said okay so wait a minute what we're going to lens we're all going to be together is it saturday that we're doing brunch when are we doing brunch and she looked at me like no you idiot and she said no we're doing the clunatic get together and you're meeting tj clune for the first time and i was like right and it's not, I'm, I do not want to minimize that at all, but also I would have been getting on that plane for sure anyway, because in my mind, it was going, I was going to go see my family who are inconveniently placed all around the world. So rude. So rude. I don't know what they were thinking, but that, but that's really, that's really the, the truth. That's they good. are my family. You may have noticed that when Mia discussed how cool it was to have narrators participate in the read-alongs, my name didn't come up. 
and no one should get their hopes up for that anytime soon, though some lovely people are trying to convince me. Um, I've said if I ever do them, which I probably won't, I'm not doing a whole chapter. You're getting a few pages and then we'll talk because yeah. <laughs> way yeah. more exciting. If then, we want to read a whole, if we want to hear a whole chapter of you doing it, we just download the book. So absolutely true. And also that's what I do for a living. Why would I want to do it yeah. for fun? Like, no, I'll read a couple pages and then we'll and talk. I think you should come and do a reading. It is know. fun. Like so many topics we've discussed in the podcast, the true value of the read-alongs isn't about what TJ writes on the page. It's about the people who find each other when they read it. I'm not sure participating in the read-alongs has changed the way I think about TJ's books so much as they've opened my eyes and ears and heart to appreciate the diversity of TJ's readers. I'm ever amazed and appreciative that while I think I'm reading a funny, dramatic, angsty, adventurous story, other people are seeing themselves on the page. Other people are moved to tears and laughter because TJ's stories invoke a personal revelation or provide insight to a loved one. I've come to appreciate and I hope embrace the wide section of humanity that TJ's books appeal to. The gay men, the young moms, the career women, the incredible readers whose first language is in English, and yet they choose to read TJ's works in English because they love the stories parents of the LGBTQIA who share their parenting experiences and the people of color who generously share their experiences and joy of seeing themselves on TJ's pages. I've also come to understand how much TJ's works mean to those who live in remote or conservative parts of the world, that somehow readers can relax with TJ's book and participate in discussions that that they'd never be able to have with their neighbor or even their best friend. It's just such an amazing gift. So thank you for TJ's books and Mia and the Clunatics for facilitating the read-alongs. They do mean so much. Have the read-alongs always gone perfectly well? No. (laughs) There's been showboating sheep, thirsty dogs, peeing dogs, technical issues, sideways cameras, missed chapters, some of Michael Leslie's tangents, and all manners of mixed up words, mispronunciations, slip ups, and some hysterically funny drunken reads. But ultimately the read-alongs have brought us all together in a way that I certainly didn't expect all that time ago. And it is such a joy to see the way that it has developed over this period of time. And especially in putting this episode together, hearing everybody's stories and just really understanding how much these little this little book club, this little virtual online book club has has really brought everyone together and changed the way that they think and talk about TJ's books. It's really been a wonderful thing. Lunatics Podcast is produced by Susanna Frigo, Louis Garcia, Angela Nolmoan, Sita Rajasingham, Mia Skibaris, John Steiger, and me. This episode was written by Mia Skibaris. Special thanks to our season sponsor, Chelsea Verzuivo. Make sure you're following the Clunatics Podcast on social media. Join our Facebook group and find us on Instagram and Twitter using at Clunatics Pod. All episodes are now available on YouTube as well. If you want to support the podcast with a financial contribution, hit the donate button at clunaticspodcast.com. Anything we collect from now until July 1st, 2020 will be donated to The Trevor Project. We were so incredibly lucky to have the costs of this podcast quickly covered by your generous support, but now we're asking for a different kind of support. As we consider whether to continue the podcast beyond this first batch of planned episodes, the most important metric we'll consider is whether people outside of our little group are listening. Does it have appeal for casual or future fans of TJ Klune? And to that end, we have a favor to ask of you. Share this podcast with someone you know who isn't already a fan. Encourage them to listen to the episode that you enjoyed the most and help them figure out how podcasts work if they've never listened to one before. And then have a conversation about what they liked, what they didn't get, and whether they'll listen again. And then let us know how it went. 
send us an email at lunaticspodcast at gmail.com. Additional information about the podcast, including episode transcripts and the Clune Speak Don't Be a Dictionary, is available at clunaticspodcast.com. You can find out more about me and my work at kurtreads.com. That's K-I-R-T-R-E-A-D-S dot com. All music and sound effects heard in this episode are licensed by Storyblocks Audio.